Apparently it's time. Hello, Shalom, I'm Eran Solomon. Uh, today's lesson about the parasha. Hello. Today's lesson, lesson about the parasha is not going to be a strictly uh, parasha de Shavua because portion of the prophet which we read adjacent to the to the parasha right after the parasha on Shabbat in the synagogue. Uh, usually we read a portion in the, in the uh, uh, prophet which is linked, if, even if uh, only vaguely, to the subject of the parasha itself, but not these weeks. These weeks, this period we are in, uh, which is called the Tkufa, the, the period of uh, the redeemed, uh, and will return to our, our native country, country from all the diaspora, and these seven weeks lead us straight to Rosh Hashanah. Every, each year it's like this. Three uh, calamity uh, weeks, the Ben Meit Salim, and then seven weeks of, uh, of consolation after Tisha B'Av and, uh, and all this uh, uh, period, this uh, difficult period. Now, in my book, three and seven makes ten. And in Judaism, um, the number ten is, of course, important. And I think, especially when we speak about the number 10 in an, in an abstract uh, sense, what comes to mind first is the 10 sefirot. The sefirot, the 10 um, manifestations of Hashem in which He reveals Himself inside His creation, um, are, are, are indeed 10. And even this, con uh, this uh, uh, div division between 3 and 7 is uh, typically Kabbalist. Um, the, 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 the sages of Kabbalah divide the ten sefirot into three and seven. Three uh, first sefirot, the higher, and seven lowest or, or last uh, sefirot. Uh, the three first uh, sefirot have to do, correspond with the, with the, the head in the human body. And the seven, the rest of the body. And that's actually quite weird. Because it, it, it seems that the three calamity, three weeks of calamity, have to do with the highest sefirot, with the greatest light, with what should have been the best. And, and the consolation is the lowest, lowest seven. Um, so that's actually the, the subject of this, of this shiur. So let's think about it. How, how come... What was supposed to be the, 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 the highest uh, degree becomes something which is really not good. But indeed, these three weeks are weeks of, 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 of great things, of great joy they were supposed to be and they will be. The Prophet says that all these fasts, that we were fa fasting days, uh, which have to do with the, the destruction of the Temple, will indeed become not normal days. They will become better days, they will become the best days, they will, will become holidays in the world to come. Um, so that's, that's because really this is a time of great, of, 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 of the greatest lights, of greatest spirituality. Um, even if we, we, we uh, look at it historically speaking, if we go really to the roots of, of this uh, period of three weeks, it is bordered by 17 Tammuz and it ends with Tisha B'Av. Now originally 17 Tammuz which has become a fasting day in the Bible you would read that's the day that according to our, uh, our uh, Masoret, according, according to our tradition 17 Tammuz that's the day where the people of Israel worshipped the golden calf and the uh, tablets uh, of testimony were uh, broken by uh, Moshe Rabbeinu. And in another year, but three weeks later, in the next year, 
on Tisha B'Av, that was the day where the Meraglim, the spies, came back and the people of Israel um, really uh, accepted this slander that the spies uh, said, they talked about uh, the, the, the country, the, the land of Israel and we were punished by 40 years of wandering in the desert instead of coming into the land of Israel straight. Now if, if we look at the 17th of Thamuz, it, it should have been a very, very great day. That was the day where the first, the Torah in its first version, the version where, where the, the, the tablets of testimony in their, the first tablets of testimony were supposed to be given to the people of Israel. So that's a great light coming from heaven. But we were not prepared and the, 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 the tablets were destroyed. But, but uh, in its deepest, it's really a, a time of great light. So how does it work exactly? There is such a spiritual rule that when a great light comes from Hashemai, from heaven, it seeks a vessel, a, a receptacle to reside in. If the vessel is not sufficiently ready, it is not sufficiently big, is not sufficiently strong to hold that light, it is the coming of the light that, this, that, that causes destruction. The light becomes from something which should have been a blessing, it becomes like Chas Shalom, a curse. There is a nice uh, s sign in this. If we look at the word Or, which is in Hebrew is light, and now it's not supposed to, it's supposed to be not in the mirror image like in the last lesson. O. The word O begins with an Aleph, and Aleph is of course one. It has the numerical, numerical uh, uh, number of one. It signifies Hashem. It signifies the numerical uh, number uh, of, of the word O is Ein Sof, which is, which is infinity in Hebrew, exactly. 207 in Gimatri, as we say. So the word O is something which is supposed to be good. But if there is no vessel, no kli in Hebrew to hold that light, then the O becomes Arur or, or Orel, something which, is, which has to do in Hebrew with Orel, or uh, Arur is damned has to do with malediction, with, with a curse. So, all this leads to this understanding that really this time is, ti is a time of great light. It's a, gr it's a time where, uh, uh, where Hashem wants to give us, wants to give us the, the, the best of presents. But, so far, we were not ready. Apparently, we will be ready, because they are indeed going to turn into good times, to Yamim Tovim, to Chagim, to holidays. But we have to prepare. So I think there are three main things we have to remember here. First, indeed, to remember this light. This light which is hidden in everything. And it's hidden even if in things that, we seem, that, that, that seem to us bad. There is light in there. And even in these three weeks of Ben Amitzalim, between the straits, which are difficult times, it's really a great potential light, which can and will eventually come to light, will, will, will really uh, become real and actual. So first of all, we should know that there is light always. And sometimes the lower we go, the lower we feel, it means that there is that the, the, the light is, is uh, and, the, and the good and the plenty, the shefa that Hashem wants to give us is the greatest. Second thing we must remember is that the reason why the light transforms into something bad is because of our lack of uh, preparation. We ha we ha so far we haven't prepared enough. We haven't prepared the, the, the vessel enough to hold the light and it's us who do that and that leads to the third point in this and the th third thing to remember that if it's if it's all up to us then we have we have the force
to fix it. We have to to uh, 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 to prepare a vessel. How do we make this hachanat kelim? How would we prepare the vessels that that that, when, that can hold the light? And the reason uh, and the answer to that is teshuva, repentance. That's the moral of this tkufa of this period, which is hard. If we transform that period into something which leads us to teshuva, to repentance, then we may say that we, we begin to prepare the kli, the vessel, to hold the light. And we will, in the end, have that light. Um, actually, the, uh, cal the Jewish calendar, calendar is built like this because the seven weeks of consolation lead us straight to Rosh Hashanah. Lead us through Elul, and that's the month before Tishrei, before the uh, month of New Year, and into straight into the Rosh Hashanah to, to, the, to, uh, to the days of repentance, where we really uh, look at our deeds and uh, try to, to make ourselves better. So these are the three, three points that I wanted to emphasize. The point of, of remembering the great light which is always there and the, 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 the fact that we have to prepare the vessel and we do that through tshuva. So may, may we really make tshuva and through that uh, come to real redemption, geulah shlema, and uh, live to see the Mashiach coming very quickly. Bezrat Hashem, Imirav Yamenu Amen. Now, I am Eran Solomon, or Reb Eran Solomon, or Rebbe Eran Solomon, but I am not a rabbi, a rabbi. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not Rav Eran Solomon. What does that mean? It means that I am not qualified or authorized to give uh, halachic uh, answers uh, or verdicts, what we say, what, uh, which we call Pesakim, but I teach Torah, and for that I accept the title of Rebbe. I teach Torah, I love to teach Torah, and um, you, can, uh, you can see me in these uh, lessons, and um, if you wish for, for uh, other, other uh, platforms to learn with me, there is, this, uh, there is a possibility for one-on-one uh, -on -one, um, uh, learning together, sh shiur, limud, uh, on Skype, if you wish. So just uh, stay, stay in contact. Uh, give me a call. So hope you enjoyed this and uh, spread the word. So maybe Shabbat Shalom and Besorot uh, Tovot, good days that will come fast, as quickly as possible. See you.